Hi everybody. This video will describe how to set up a basic interaction system for Unity uh, in a third person or first person 3D game. So this first video we're going to do uh, the interaction uh, script setup as well as we'll do a simple test with a coin collect and destroy interaction. Uh, then later videos we'll come back and do some more complex uh, interactions to add to this. So I want to show you what uh, the final output could be. I have an interaction script on my player character uh, and in a previous video I talked about how to set up kind of first person point of view as well as to be able to toggle between third person and first person point of view. So uh, I have a coin in here and the coin is perpetually rotating and moving uh, and there's copies of the coin. These are prefabs and I have my console open down here so you can see that I don't have the UI set up uh, right now I just have the interactions but I do have the debug log so when I go over here and uh, collide with the coin it will destroy that coin and then display the number one which means I've collected one coin I come over to the second coin collect that coin it says two so I've collected two coins come over to my third coin it says three I've collected three coins so it's a very simple way to set up an interaction system uh, without kind of overcomplicating things. And in a later video, we'll also talk about a second variation of this of where we can have a chest that we come up to and interact with it, press E, and that pops a coin out. And then I can collect that secondary coin that now has kind of physics applied to it. I can pop another coin and pick that up. So we'll come back and expand upon this in a later video. So let's create this from scratch here. So I already have some prefabs in here and I'm just going to remove those out. So we're starting without any prefabs uh, and we're going to build this from scratch here. I'm also going to go into my character movement script or character movement object which is my kind of hierarchy node for my character and I'm going to remove my interaction script out. Um, it's still in my scene. I'm just going to remove it out and we'll create a new one here. Okay, so in a previous video as well I talked about importing in uh, custom models with textures. Uh, so I have a coin and I'll move it up some and then I also have a chest and we'll come back to the chest in a later video. They're really large right now so um, I'm gonna make some scale adjustments to it. It's not too bad, it's just pretty big. Uh, so I maybe make it uh, half that size. So I'm gonna get out of the coin and instead of dragging it into 3D world I'm gonna take my coin mesh uh, and drag this into the hierarchy. Um, so it's called mesh coin. Let's change the name of this and call this coin individual. And I'm going to reset the transform. So let's put it back to the center. <clears throat> it is in the center of the screen, but it's a little smaller, which is fine. Or I think I scaled it up to begin with. So let's um. So it's really small now. <clears throat> so excuse me. Let's uh, scale this up by 25. And um, let's see, let's pull this up to maybe one above that and go look and see what that looks like. So we're going to play again. I'm always going to test from playing to see how big I want this to be. I think that's the right size. It might be a little high uh, for the characters. Let's look at it. Yep, so it's a little high for the character's uh, standpoint. So maybe we'll drop it down to 0.5 and go test this out. So we want to make sure we have the base size how we want it to before we do it. So that might be a little low this time. Maybe a little bit higher than that. Um, so maybe 0.75. There you go. So that'll work. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think that's a pretty good size and height for our coin collectible. And what we want to do next is start to set this up so that we can make it into a prefab and animate it and then interact with it with our script. Okay, so with this object we need a couple of things that are going to be added to it. I'm going to roll up the mesh renderer because we're not going to make any adjustments to that. But we are going to add a box collider. And for this box collider, this is going to be a trigger. We want the player to be able to not collide with it, but overlap that box collision and then collect the coin. So we're going to turn on trigger for the box collider. And we're going to have one more thing here, which is going to be the rigid body. And then we're going to turn off use gravity because I want this to kind of float in the air, so I don't want to use gravity there. Box collider with trigger and rigid body with use gravity turned off. Okay, so I'm actually going to duplicate this coin and use this 
uh, base coin setup for my chest object in the next video. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. We'll just do Control D. And instead of coin individual, I'm gonna say coin for chest. And I'm just gonna turn off the set active button for that one um, because I'm gonna come back to that one in the next video once we get to the chest. So this coin individual, um, in order for the animation to work for us to be able to uh, duplicate this around the scene with a prefab, we need to have an empty game object that's gonna be a hierarchy parent node. So let's go ahead and create that. So we're gonna create a new empty object and we're gonna call this one coin base. And I'm gonna add uh, the number or the letter A to this because I already have an object called coin base in here. So we'll just call this coin base A. I'm going to uh, reset the transforms. I'm gonna put it in the center of the grid. And I'm gonna leave it there because when I drag my copies of my coin in, I want to be able to snap it to the ground surface, but also have the coin kind of float in the air. So I don't want the coin itself to be snapped to the ground. Uh, this is also gonna have the pivot point at the bottom for this empty game object on the ground and the coin's gonna be up in the air. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is actually parent the coin individual object underneath the coin base. Here we go. So this way when I move the coin base around, it moves the coin, but then the animation and the interaction point of view for the coin is actually gonna be on the coin individual object. The coin base is just our movement standpoint for which will what will be the prefab in the end. All right, so the next thing we can do is actually create um, a pickup tag so that way the script can understand. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of set things as much as I can up in Unity, and then we'll go into our script after that. So let's create a pickup tag. Uh, I already have a pickup tag created in here, but if you don't have one, you can do add tag, and uh, we're gonna click on the plus symbol, and you can add a new one. So if we wanted to change this to coin, we could use the coin tag here, or we could use pickup. So we add a new tag, and then we go back to that individual coin object, and then underneath the tag dropdown, we're gonna add pickup. So I'm gonna keep with pickup, which would be consistent of anything else I might need to pick up as well. All right, so now we have our pickup tag. Uh, we are ready to start animating. The last thing we need for this coin individual object in order to animate is a new component, and it's simply called the animator component. So this gives the option for us to save animation clips for this coin individual object. And I have two sub tabs open here. One of them's called the animation and the other one's called the animator. You can find these by going to window animation <clears throat> and then open up the animation or animator window. So for this coin individual, uh, we need to create, uh, actually I think I'm gonna change the name coin individual to coin individual A. So that way it's not uh, confusing itself with the other coin prefab that I already have. Uh, and uh, everything will be coin A, coin individual A, coin base A. So that'll kind of keep it simple here. So we're gonna go to the animation window to begin with and create our animation clip of the coin spinning around in 360 degrees and also kind of bobbing up and down and somewhat of a sine wave. Uh, which will be a continuous loop in motion. So I'm gonna have my coin individual A selected after I add my animator, and we're gonna click the Create button. And this creates a new animation clip. I have an animations folder already, and I have a couple of animations in here. We're gonna call this one coin A and M uh, for coin A animation. Okay. And uh, so what it does, it brings up a timeline. And we're going to, this is a one second timeline if I play, you can kind of see it's kind of going through that. And uh, what I want to do is turn on the uh, create button, or sorry, the record button. And that turns my timeline to red, which means whatever I change attribute wise, it's gonna create a property track for this animation. So the first thing I wanna change is the rotate. And I'm not gonna create a keyframe on frame zero, it's gonna do that for me. And I'm gonna go to the one uh, second in and I'm gonna change the rotate Y. So if I start to rotate this, click and drag, it created a keyframe on zero and a keyframe on one. Uh, so let's just type in 360 here. So rotate Y is the 
uh, horizontal axis. So if I type in 360, and every time I make a change, it's going to override that keyframe. So now if I play, it's going to spin my coin around 360 degrees. Now it's kind of slowing down, speeding up at the start and the end of the motion, so we'll come back and correct that. But let's also go in and create uh, some motion. So I'm also going to go into the timeline and about uh, 20 frames in, um, let's make the I really want the coin to kind of move up and down, bob up and down like this. So my default was at 0.75, so let's just increase it slightly to 0.85, and that will kind of move it up slightly. And then let's say on frame 40, I want it to move down to 0.65. Okay. Then I can go back to frame 1, or at the end, and then reset this back to 0.75. So if I play, that would be a looping motion bouncing up and down. Now the timing's a little off, and we're going to correct that now. But that's how we can create keyframe animation. Uh, we go to the frame we want, and we go change the attribute, and it creates a keyframe there. It's always going to create a keyframe on frame 0. And this is, needs to be a looping animation, so the last frame on frame 1, or 1 second, uh, should be the same as on frame 0. All right, so uh, that was the dope sheet. That's how we create the keyframes. The curves are how we can edit those keyframes to be able to make it more natural and adjust it how we want to. So we have two. We have a position and a rotate attribute. And the only one that's really changing is the rotate Y. So I'm going to click on rotate Y, and if I hit the F key, you can see how that's going to animate. Uh, and uh, it's going to loop. So if I zoom out, you can see how much it's going to loop. So I can move over here, zoom in, and move over. And what I want to do is drag select on these keyframes. And if the curve is more vertical, it's going to be faster. If the curve is more horizontal, it's going to be slower. So it starts off slow, it speeds up, and it ends slow. So that's why it doesn't look like a consistent kind of spinning. But if I drag select over these two keyframes in that curve and right click, I can change the way what's called the tangents, which is the way the curve looks as it goes in and out of the keyframes. Go where those tangents run and um, move in and out of the keyframe. So I'm just going to go down to both tangents and change this to linear because I want a constant velocity. So if I change the tangents to linear, that will create a constant, consistent angle. It's not going to slow down and speed up. So if I just look at the rotate here, it's a consistent rotation hem. Okay, so the second thing we want to change is uh, the position and the position Y. So if I go over here and select position Y and if I hit the F key that'll frame to see my uh, animations here or my, my curve. And I want to drag select these and uh, I don't really want it to pause as it goes to the start and finish. I want to kind of ease in and out of that start and finish. So let's uh, pause the timeline and right click and let's try auto. So audio should, do, audio should do a pretty good job. And this will create relatively a sine wave with the motion already created. And that should blend it in and out of those keyframes. So let's play that again. And it looks a lot more natural now. Uh, the spinning is consistent. And then the vertical motion, it blends in and out of the poses here. All right, so that'll be our animation. And the key thing with this one, I'm going to hit pause and we'll turn off recording is in my project folder, here's my animations folder I just created, and here's my coin A animation. Whenever I do this, it's going to create um, <clears throat> a uh, coin uh, individual A animator controller object, and then here's my coin A animation. Now I want this to loop, so I'm going to leave the loop time checked because I just want it to continue to animate until I actually collide with it. So loop time with the animation file is checked. All right, so the next thing to do is actually to create our script. So we're going to right click in our I have a scripts folder. I'm going to right click in that folder. I'm going to create new. And we're going to create a new script. And I'm going to call this one interactions. And we'll say A just to keep it consistent. Interactions A. I already have one called interactions. So interactions A. I'm going to create that script. I'm going to go ahead and add this script to my character movement. 
Uh, I'll call, I'm calling this the character movement switch because I have a switch between first and third person point of view. So this is my hierarchy node for my character. This is where the player movement script is added. One of the things that I am adding here is a box collider uh, to my character movement. This character has, or this hierarchy has a character controller, but in order to easily uh, trigger these box colliders, I need a secondary box collider. And this is only going to be used for the uh, collisions to for these interactions. So I've added a box collider, trigger is not turned on. So then I want to take my interactions A script and drag that to my character movement. So same place my player movement script is, my interaction script is going to be there as well. So let's say control A to save. And let's open up our interactions A script. I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code and add our interactions to the script. So I want a couple things to happen. I want uh, to, when the player interacts with this coin, I want it to destroy the coin so the coin's not available and visible anymore. And then I want to add a value to a uh, collection of the coin. So basically we're going to create a variable that stores how many coins I create or I collect in this script and then I can drive uh, some UI elements to let the player know that they've collected 1, 2, 10 coins. Right now we're just going to do the script and the custom variable for this and then in a later video we'll come back and do the UI. Alright, so uh, I don't need void start, uh, so I'm going to remove out the void start sections. I'm going to eventually need the void update with some other interactions, but right now I'm not going to need that, um, so I'm going to skip over that. But within my code here, I'm going to add one simple variable, and this is going to be a private, and this is going to be an integer, so private int, and we're going to call this one coin collect. And we're going to create a default value of zero. If you don't put zero in there, it'll default to zero anyway, but uh, just to keep it consistent, private int, and we're going to call that variable coin collect, create a default value of zero. So we're going to skip down underneath void update, and we're going to add an on trigger enter. So void on trigger enter, and we're going to open up parentheses and do collider and other. I'm just going to skip back here so it doesn't accidentally uh, pre-fill it with the, one of the defaults there. So void on trigger enter and open up parentheses collider other. And we're going to turn down and open up a close uh, curly brackets. So we need a simple if statement here that's going to see if the other object that we're colliding with has that pickup tag. So we go back to our coin individual A. If the player is colliding with an object that has a box collider that's triggerable, that has a pickup tag named pickup, then do something. So we're going to do if, uh, open up parentheses other dot game object dot compare tag, and open up another set of parentheses, and open set of quotation, and we're going to say pickup. So that's the name of that tag, and then close those two sets of parentheses and the one set of um, quotation marks. And I always like to add comments, so we're going to do a comment say, pick up and destroy coin. All right, so then we're going to return down and open up and close another set of curly brackets. So this statement says, well, if the player is colliding with another object as a pickup, uh, as a, compa a ter compare tag of pickup, then we want to do two things. We want to destroy. So destroy, open up parentheses, other.game object. Close parentheses, semicolon. So that will delete the object from the gameplay mode. Uh, so it's no longer in the world, makes it no longer visible, and deletes it out. And the second thing we want to do is we want to increase that coin collect variable to one. So we're going to do coin collect equals coin collect plus one. So every time a coin is picked up, it will increase a coin collect variable to one. And then eventually we can display that to the player uh, through a UI element. So let's uh, return down. We're going to do debug dot log, open up parentheses, coin collect. 
what that's going to do is display how many coins I've collected uh, in the console. So it's just a debug method to display that. And that's our script. That's what we need so far. So let's say Control S to save. And let's go back into Unity. Let's make sure we don't have any errors. Looks like we're pretty good. All right, so I already have the script on my character movement object. I'm loading up my console so I can see when I'm collecting a coin. And let's go play. All right, so I can move around. Uh, I don't have anything collected. The coin is animating, moving around. If I go overlap this, the coin now disappears. It's gone. It's just destroyed. And in my console, it says 1, which tells me my coin collect uh, debug worked, and it saved that collection of that coin in a variable. All right, so that works. So the final thing we're going to do is convert this into a prefab. So I have a prefabs folder and I have some objects in here already. And in order to convert an object to a prefab, I'm going to take the object coin base A and drag that into my prefabs folder. That's going to convert this to a prefab and in my hierarchy it's going to create a blue uh, text and a blue box, blue cube, which lets me know this is a prefab. So now what I can do is duplicate my coin prefab or I can just come in here with coin base A and drag more copies of Coinbase A in here, which are copies of my prefab, move them around to different areas of my level, and then we can duplicate it more, so we do a couple more times, move more of these around to my level, that one over here, and when I play, the same action interaction should work with all of these, so if I go collect one coin, let's go click on our console, collects coin one, says one down there in the console, then it says two because I've collected two coins, three, four, I think the last one should be five, oh, I got another one somewhere, there it is, six, six, so I've collected six coins and they've destroyed each one of them. The nice part about prefabs is that in case I need to make adjustments I can go into the prefab itself, so coin base A, if I want to say with this coin individual, well, let's make it a little larger. Maybe that's not large enough. So let's say 35 by 35 by 35. So it's a little larger. It increases the scale of all of them. So if I want to make it really large, let's go back in the coin individual and let's say 100. There we go. And I'll go back out. Now they're all the same size. That's too large, of course. So we're going to go back and let's say, well, I think 35 is pretty good. So let's do 35 by 35 by 35. I can make any adjustments to the way this uh, coin prefab works, and it's going to make adjustments to anything that is already in my scene. So it's a good, easy way to create coin collectibles uh, with a simple interaction script. That'll wrap up this video. In the next video, we'll come back and talk about some secondary interactions to explore other ways that we can interact with objects.